And now we're talking with Anne McMahon, author of many of my favorite novels. I'll try not to be a jackass as I sit directly across from her for this. Too late. <laughs> her latest novel is The Blackbird of Chernobyl, which just, just came out very recently from Bywater Books. Welcome, Anne Thank McMahon. you for having me. Can you tell people a little bit of what The Blackbird of Chernobyl is all about? Well, oddly enough, I guess you could say it's a spin-off. Um, several years ago, I wrote a novel called The Big Toe. Mm -hmm. That's about uh, two women who meet when they take unlikely temp jobs repossessing cars. Mm -hmm. One of the women, Frankie Stoller, grew up in an old Winston-Salem family, and her parents run a funeral home. Her sister, Lila, who is a mortician, is kind of a, she talks like Lorraine Bracco, she's terribly dark and irreverent, yeah. and goth as hell, and yeah. has scorn for anything that, 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 that speaks to romance. And Lila, I thought, was just too rich a character to leave alone. Mm -hmm. And I felt like she deserved some ink of her own. So that really inspired me to write a book that talks about Lila and shares a little bit about her journey. So I think Lila is the second mortician in all of Lesbeck. I think I've Who read- Who was the first? I think I'm almost positive PJ Troublehorn wrote one. And if it wasn't a mortician, it was somebody who ran a funeral home. But I haven't read that book in many years and mm -hmm. I can't remember the title. So mm -hmm. sorry, uh, people. But we'll yeah. try to put yeah. it in the show notes. Well, everybody told me this was going to be the kiss of death, which you know I excel at, right? <laughs> I mean, I wake up in the morning and try to think of topics that are guaranteed not to sell. <laughs> And yet, here we are at GCLS when I've heard so many people say they're so excited about this book. How fun was it to write Lila? You know, it, Lila was, Lila was a, like a gift. She was wonderful to write because she has, she has my sense of humor. You know, she's dark and irreverent. She basically doesn't, can I use a bad word? Oh, we do. Oh, all, yeah. Do you, okay. Oh, oh, if you want a little behind the scenes of the <laughs> yeah, clearly yeah, recommended yeah. podcast, we didn't label it as explicit, but Apple did. So. <laughs> oh, well, let me help yeah. you out with that. Lila yes. gives, doesn't give a flying fuck about <laughs> Annie. <Wonderful. laughs> so, so I really liked her, and it was a lot of fun to, you know, really come up with as much funereal humor mm -hmm. as possible. And death can really be funny. Yes. You know, if you take the right perspective on it. Yes. And one of the things that I drew on that, that helped me tremendously, looking back over all the years of GCLS conferences I've attended in different cities, mm -hmm. some of the really bizarre, the job I want in the next life mm -hmm. is the person in the hotel who books conferences. <laughs> <laughs> like there was one in Miami uh -huh. years ago where they they booked a the, the the Golden Crown conference with a funeral directors conference. No. No, I'm not even kidding. Wow. So of course that's in this book. The other thing I think it was in DC maybe where there was an anime do you remember that? Oh, the furries. Was what? The fur remember the, the fur furries? The I remember furries. The furries are in this book. <laughs> one night, one night after a grueling day, they were all over the hotel. Salem and I were on our way back to our room. We came out of the elevator, rounded the corner, and a giant rabbit was giving a blowjob <laughs> to us. You know, so it's kind of like, this is a book I can write. <laughs> So in the book, <laughs> Lila and Sparkle go to a funeral convention in mm -hmm. Vegas, and there's a, a cosplay. Yeah, that's amazing. Conve so there's a lot of GCLS <laughs> history woven into. Okay, they actually had. Amazing. Am I talking too long? No. They, they actually had a a sign in in one of the elevators that said, "Remove your headdress yes. if it's higher than seven feet." Oh my <laughs> god! I do remember, remember that. Remember that one? I remember the notes. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to write Lila. So. I mean, I guess, spoiler for the people listening, I've, I've read this already, so I have, you know, a, a couple more questions, and uh, I will be talking about it more in the next episode, so you can expect kind of my more review -y type thoughts there, but I found it really, really interesting that Lila was so committed to making, sh like, the ecological footprint. Right, right. And Green burial. Yeah, I was right. wondering if you could talk about that a little bit Let because me, it's a it's a it's a book with a point of view about is. how an industry should be evolving. It is, and and I'm glad that you picked up on that because I did tons and tons of research on and boy was the research for this one fun. <laughs> Have you ever watched an embalming? Don't. No. No, I'm good. Um, I'm but anyway, no. Swedish, I mean, so no. there is a there is a woman uh, named Caitlin Doty. 
-hmm. who is amazing, famous, and she has a podcast, it's like a YouTube uh, show called Ask a Mortician, that it's, you can't look away. I mean, it's like, okay. it's like an 18 car pile up on the highway. Oh you want to slow down, get off and come back around, you know, and she's, and she's, she's basically my archetype for Lila. She's dark, she's funny as hell and irreverent. And she is all about what she calls good death. And she has a foundation mm -hmm. called the Order of Good Death. So I became enamored with her. I bought her books. She has a book called Smoke Gets in Your Eyes that is a memoir of her, one of her first jobs in California, knowing nothing about it. She got a job working in a crematory and oh. had no clue what all was going to, wow. and then she ended up being uniquely suited to the work mm -hmm. and took to it. Now she's a full-fledged mortician, but she is a champion of these alternative uh, eco-friendly carbon neutral forms mm -hmm. of burial, like human composting, mm -hmm. like a hydro cremation, which I personally wish to have. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know about it mm -hmm. until I did the research for this book. What is hydro? Hydro mm -hmm. cremation, there's a term for it. It basically, they take the body and it goes into a chamber, uh, like a stainless steel chamber, with any kind of common alkaline solution, something you have in your house. And they, they it's warm water, they rotate it, they mix it, and in like, uh, don't quote me on this, I might be wrong, in, in like two weeks or something, all of the organic matter, including the skeleton, is completely dissolved, and there is nothing in there but clear water. Wow. No toxins, no anything. And it could go right down the drain. Oh my gosh. It's remarkable. Mm -hmm. And it's legal now in something like, you know, 23 states. I didn't know anything about that or the compost. Like I had human no, composting is fascinating. I had no idea mm, that terrible. crematoriums are bad for the environment. They're terrible I for the environment. I thought it was I mean, better than burying. Right? You might as well be driving Granddad's Oldsmobile. Mm -hmm. You know, punch out the catalytic converter and have yourself a party. <laughs> so, like, honestly, reading this book, and this is, I suppose, wow. uh, this is gonna be news to Neil, who edits the podcast. But uh, <laughs> hey, babe, I think I want to look into <laughs> more like eco-friendly yeah. because we mm. talked about. Well, it doesn't make sense to take up space like right. in in, yeah, in the world space. like just burn us it's fine right. and it's like no there's better well we all we all thought that, that was better right, right. because mm -hmm. you're not doing you're not doing the concrete burial why are we this book is y'all <laughs> please believe me <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, this book is a romance <laughs> <laughs> it, it is but also I think like this book is important because like it actually changed my perspective and how I want yeah mine to go someday like that's mm -hmm. the transformative power of fiction well the other thing that um what was the other thing it just went away see it might be closer for me so than it's, we a realized. <laughs> it's a romance it's a romance well the other thing that i really wanted to do was take on the whole taboo of death mm -hmm. you know why are people afraid of thinking about it and writing about it and why isn't it okay to make it funny because there yeah. are actually hilarious, that's why the book itself, every chapter in the book begins with a, an obituary. Yes. Oh. And the obituaries are terribly Southern. Mm -hmm. And if you never, <laughs> if you never, like a woman who's, who's, who's the biggest joy of her life was making chicken pies for Jesus. Yes. <laughs> I mean, these are real people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so each chapter begins with an obituary from yeah. one of these lovely people. And then the chapter proceeds, and usually the chapter ends with the actual funeral service, yeah. and everything that could possibly go wrong goes wrong. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and it's just, it's, it's so fun. It's a really fun rom-com. And I think the thing that I love, too, is Lila is, she's quite unlikable. She start. is. Or she's uh, difficult to like if you haven't met her before. Right. <laughs> but I think for me realizing, because it's all told from her perspective, and so it's really her, it's it's almost like a coming-of-age book for a middle-aged person, right. which I love. She had an emotional failure to launch and goes through a <laughs> series does. of events that helps her. Well, that force her, really, yes. out of her. Lila is perfectly happy inhabiting her world downstairs yes where the business mm -hmm. of the funeral she doesn't want to deal with the public she mm -hmm. likes dead people a lot that yeah. works out for her yeah and then everything changes everything changes when her father who is retiring hires a uh, marketing uh, and brand professional to lighten up the business <laughs> with a bunch of damn cookies with a bunch of damn cookies <laughs> and of course lila hates this woman with a passion i mean mm -hmm. she's like the, her polar opposite yeah. 
I mean, her name is Sparkle. Her name is, and I'm like, oh, dear God, I actually wrote a character named Sparkle. <laughs> I was wondering how you were going to so, make that make sense, but you did. Thank you. You did. It worked. Thank um, you. So where can people find the Blackbird of The Blackbird of Chernobyl. of Chernobyl published just this past week on Tuesday. For anyone at the conference, it's probably too late for that. Mm -hmm. It's on sale in the vendor area. It's also available everywhere else, um, online, bookstores, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, name it. It's available in um, ebook, paperback, and the audiobook is read by the fabulous Christine Williams. And I may tell you mm -hmm. she nailed it. She yes. absolutely nailed it. Absolutely is that what you're well. listening Right. I haven't listened to it yet, okay. but I will. Thank you so thank you much both. for joining And us. thank you both for what you do for our literature and our community. We're so in your debt. Thank you. Thank you. So and you're damn decorative, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pretty cute. We yeah. do all right. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> all right.